Hi friends and welcome back. Today's video is a tutorial for how to create these beautiful watercolor dancing flowers. So it's fun, it's whimsical, it's colorful, and you're gonna love painting them. So without further ado, grab your paintbrushes and your paints and let's dive in. Okay, so let's get set up. I've got my paintbrushes and I have a pad of hot press paper from Legion. I'm gonna open this palette up. And just so you guys know, we're not going to be sketching. We're gonna be going straight onto the paper with our watercolor. So I'm prepping my yellow, making that a slightly orangey yellow. And I'm gonna paint a very um, basic heart shape. And this shape is gonna be for the bodice of the dancer. So the dancer is gonna be coming out of the flower and this heart shape is gonna be for um, that whole upper body portion. So let's get this all filled in and I'm gonna do several others that are gonna be for other flowers that are gonna vary in shape and in color. So the first one I'm doing is in yellow, but the second one, let's do a purpley blue color. And you can use whatever colors you have in your palette. You don't have to necessarily follow what I'm doing, um, though you're welcome to do that too, of course. So let's get these heart shapes done. And as you can see, I'm kind of angling this heart a little bit to the side too, and that's gonna make the body look like it's facing a different Different direction. So depending on how you tilt and angle your heart, then the body will be facing different directions. Okay, now let's start creating the petals. And I've picked up some Opera Rose mixed with some quinacridone magenta. And I'm gonna start making some uh, brush strokes that are angled away from the body. And this flower is, I think it's gonna be somewhat like a camellia or an open, you know, honestly, I had no idea what kind of flower this is. And that's what's great about this, is you don't have to be thinking about botanical or, or necessarily anything realistic. It's just the idea or the premise of a flower and just running with that and making it a more imaginative interpretation of that. So, um, you know, you can make yours bigger or smaller or they can be different shapes if you want. Remember artists, this painting is yours. So have fun with it and um, find ways to make it your own too. So my petals are largely done, but I wanna add a little bit of a touch here on the border to um, just get that color to bleed a little bit. That's something I love doing is when the paint is still damp on my paper, adding a little bit more pigment to make that color bleed into the painting and make that painting really sing and come alive. So um, I really recommend that. And if you're not familiar with a technique called wet on wet painting, that's what I'm doing right now. And I actually created a video all about watercolor painting techniques, which I think you would find very useful. So I'm gonna link that in the description below so that you have that to check out too. All right, so I've taken some sap green for my palette and I'm gonna create a couple of leaf shapes coming from behind this flower. And then one thing that I'm gonna to add too is these little paint, what are we gonna call these? These little paint dabs or these small brush strokes, very short ones that are coming um, close to the flower. And you're gonna see how this shapes up later. And you can either uh, follow along with me or if you don't wanna do them, then you don't have to do them. But you'll see how this comes together and really brings a lot of life to the painting later on. Okay, so let's add some more of these leaves and um, you can really let your, or the shape of your flower dictate exactly where your leaves are gonna go. So if you see negative space um, in one section of your flower, then maybe that's a sign that you can add a little leaf there. I'm also grabbing some pink and adding some paint dabs um, in that color uh, right next to the green ones. So you're gonna see it's really gonna come to life. So next up, we're gonna start doing the stamen or the central part of the flower. So I'm gonna mix a yellow with a little bit of orange and make sure that color really pops. And I'm gonna make these very light, very, very, very faint and light brush strokes that are all emanating out from that central or the center portion of the flower. So that's gonna come right underneath the heart shape that we just made. And I'm angling them outwards. So they're all radiating out from where that heart is. And I don't know about you, but I think this combination of pink and yellows and reds is just so beautiful. And see what I did right there? I added a little bit of red to my yellow in the center of the flower, and that's so that the colors mix into one another and just create that gorgeous effect that we, we all love from watercolor. And feel free to add more colors surrounding your flower. Don't be scared. You know, there's no such thing as making mistakes in art. It's all about experimentation, trying a lot of different things out. And the more you do that, the faster you'll improve. 
Okay, so let's create the head and the arms. And this is often where people get really scared is when they have to start creating um, bodies and people. So don't worry, we're gonna do this together. So I have mixed some um, yellow ochre with some burnt sienna, and I'm creating a line just above my heart. And right above that, there's a little, um, what do we call it? A little brush stroke coming out of it, like a stick. And to that little stick, we're going to attach a ball. And that's gonna be for the head of our figure. And I've decided that I want this particular one to be of a deeper complexion, but if you want to make your person have a lighter complexion, you can just water down the paint and add a little bit of red to it. So let's create the arms. And here we're just creating very long brush strokes that are, let's see, which, which angle is this one gonna be facing? So these ones are facing kind of like she's waving, <laughs> but you can vary this if you want. And if you feel that you're getting stressed out by doing the arms and you're not really sure which direction you want them facing, then you can always sketch it out first with a pencil just to get the lines right and then apply the brush strokes with more confidence once you um, feel a bit more comfortable with it. So I'm going to add a little bit of a deeper color here to bring that arm forward, um, her right arm. <laughs> and then we can now work on her hair and her features. And I know you're probably getting a little bit nervous because this is the part where everyone gets a little bit nervous. But don't worry, we're going to keep it really simple here. So we're going to add some brush strokes, just one sweeping brush stroke above the head. And then I have a little ball-like shape that's gonna be at the base of her neck. So you can either have it on one side only or you know, a little piece peeking out on one side and the rest of it on the other side of her neck. So it kind of looks like a low bun. Now we're going to do the eyes and the mouth. And here I've switched um, to a very fine brush. I would really recommend using a fine brush for this. And we're gonna create an elongated upside down U for this. Okay, you heard me right. It's like a very long curve that um, goes upwards, like, a, like an upside down U. And so these are gonna be for her eyelashes. And you can, if you want, you can put a little ball right underneath it for the eye. And then just a simple dot for the lips. You heard me right, it's just a dot. See, not so difficult, especially when we keep it simple. And it doesn't have to take away from the impact of the painting, especially if we have such beautiful bright colors throughout the rest of the piece. All right, so now that we have our template, I'm gonna call this our template, we can create variations on this for all of the other flowers. So I'm switching up my brush stroke style and creating very long brush strokes for what is this flower called again? Um, a black-eyed Susan. Okay, yes, a black-eyed Susan. And if you're not familiar with what this flower looks like, it's essentially like a daisy, but with yellow petals. So you can either follow along with me, or if you wanna try different petal configuration, then you can do that too. I'm um, improvising and just sort of winging it as I go. So you're welcome to try different petal shapes if you want. Um, and different colors if you wanna, you know, just experiment with whatever is in your palette. Um, and then we're just gonna follow the same rules for the upper body and the head, so we can vary that too. And I'm gonna add some little dots right around um, the central part of the flower. And I'm gonna allow that to bleed into the rest of my petals, just like I did for uh, the pink flower before that. And I think that's gonna have a beautiful effect. So don't be afraid to, you know, move pigment around and get things to blur into one another. Um, that's what this medium is all about, you guys. So now that you know what to do, I'm gonna hit the fast forward button so this video doesn't last three hours. And I'm gonna do some variations on what we just did together. So we did a yellow flower and we did a pink one. And now I'm gonna take you through different variations so you can get some other ideas for how else you could fill up your page with some beautiful expressive watercolor flowers.
So blast from the past for any 80s or 90s kids out there. This particular painting actually was inspired by the Disney movie Fantasia. And that was a movie that I just fell in love with at the time. And truth be told, I really at the time wanted to become a Disney animator. And so um, that was a lifelong dream I had as a kid, which didn't materialize. But I did end up following my passions, which were art and design and building a career for myself based on that. So, you know, sometimes life takes you on paths that you don't expect. And so little did I know that after pursuing a career in design for over 10 years, I would later come back to my roots, which is, you know, Disney and Fantasia and doing a tutorial all about florals that are inspired by one of my favorite movies as a kid. Okay, so this flower now is gonna be an iris, and so you can see how the petal shape varies a little bit. I made it slightly more serrated, and I'm gonna add some touches of pigment around the edges to give it that more dimensional look. And I'm really just going with a more imaginative impression of an iris, so, you know, I'm referencing pictures as I go, but I'm not being so completely literal. I really want this to feel magical and imaginative and whimsical, so you can really just play around with the shapes you're creating, and you don't even have to base it on a particular flower, to be honest. I mean, who really cares if it looks realistic, if it brings a smile to your face and just has a lot of joy? And here's my opinion. Once you start to lean into the things that make your art unique and surprising and unusual, that's where the magic happens. It isn't where you are, you know, being completely literal and, um, you know, perfect. It really comes from the imperfections and what you can bring to the table. And that's why some of the most famous artists of the world are so unique. It's because they bring their own flavor and their own style to what they're making. So keep that in mind, artists. Be yourself and really embrace the unusual parts of what make your art special. I'm going to add some yellow to the center parts of these petals and I'm actually going to allow that to bleed into the purple part. So purple and yellow usually yield a muddier color consistency, which one could see as a mistake, but I happen to think it's really beautiful in this instance. So we're going to lean into that and embrace it. And I don't know about you, but I think my instincts were right because look at the gorgeousness that's happening on these petals. And that's where, you know, breaking the rules or leaning into your mistakes can sometimes yield the most beautiful, spectacular results. And the rest of this figure is gonna be pretty much identical to the first one that I demonstrated. So we're doing, you know, the same thing over and over again as far as the head, the arms, just varying the position of the arms a little bit, um, depending on the shape of the flower. I'm also introducing maybe a secondary color into the skin tone, so this one is a little bit pinkier. Overall, it'll all come together no matter what color you choose. And case in point here, I'm adding some purple to the arms, which would be totally weird in a real person. But um, for the sake of this painting, it really helps tie everything together and makes everything look mo much more unified when you use you know, the same colors throughout the entire piece. Okay, so we're gonna do our last flower, I think, for this, um, for this piece. And I think my paper can only fit five flowers. Um, and so this is gonna be my take on a rose and it's gonna be a more graphic interpretation of a rose. And I'm creating some C-shaped curves that are all gonna be wrapping around the torso of this dancer. And just so you know, when you're creating a rose, it's basically just a set of overlapping C-type curves that go from really thin and bundled up very close together to more spread out and wider and larger as they radiate outwards. And I have a beginner guide to florals uh, with watercolor that I'm going to link in the description below if you want to hone in on some of these watercolor floral painting techniques. But again, don't concern yourself if it's you know not looking super realistic because that's totally fine. In fact, it's going to make it look even more like a Disney animated flower. So as I'm getting more and more towards the outer edges of the flowers, then I'm allowing those petals to become a little bit more irregular. So right here, I'm gonna add a couple of bumps right here to make it look like those petals are slightly more irregular than the ones that are wrapping on the inside. And again, I'm gonna bring some of the colors that I have in some of the other flowers, like the purple that I used for the iris, and bring that a little bit into the color of the rose. And that's gonna help tie that in so that the rose doesn't look like it's stuck on, like a sticker. Um, so it really ties that into the entirety of the painting. 
that's really a piece of advice I would give to any watercolorist who is looking to level up their colors and level up the quality of their paintings is always make sure that you are using the same colors throughout and you know interspersing and, and mixing in those colors throughout the entire entirety of the painting so that you're creating that unity. The telltale sign of a beginner watercolorist or a beginner artist is um, they often just use very isolated instances of those colors. So in this case, you would use some of your reds in your greens, you would use some of your greens in your reds. So you're using and mixing the same colors across the entirety of the painting. So everything looks like it's a cohesive single painting as opposed to lots of different colors that are not interacting with one another. So we are making some good headway. I'm gonna switch brushes to a number one. You could also use a number two uh, Princeton round brush. Um, and this is really where I'm gonna start bringing in some of the details into the painting. So things like features and details on the leaves and, and things like that. And notice that I used blue and green for her hair. And that's what I'm gonna be doing for all of these dancers. I'm not gonna be using these expected hair colors like brunette or blonde. I'm gonna be going back to using the colors, like I mentioned before, that I've been using throughout the entire piece. So again, building in that unity. And these things really, really help. So let's add a little touch here to the blue flower. And I think I'm just gonna tackle all of the hair for all of the you know figures all at once. Maybe adding a couple of touches as well if I see areas that I'd like to enhance hands a little more. So guess what? We get to repeat this over and over again for all of our figures. So I just noticed that I have a big amount of negative space at the top of my painting right around here. And um, I think I need to fill that with something, but I don't have enough room for a full figure. So what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna add a couple of just regular flowers. So flowers without people, um, just to fill out that space so it doesn't look like there's a big hole right there. So I'm gonna pick up some of the red that I used for the rose and I'm gonna make some little baby roses right here. So they're kind of like um, fluffy cotton ball type shapes, which I'll later add uh, detail to. So I'm gonna make maybe two or three of them so they all look like they're stemming from the same vine. And while I wait for that first layer to dry before I add the details to it, I'm just gonna add some more foliage around it, again, to fill out that negative space and to make everything look like, you know, it all comes together like pieces in a puzzle. And let me know, you guys, if you're interested in me doing a video about leaf shapes or foliage shapes, because it's basically the same brush strokes you use over and over again for most leaves. Um, little variations between them, but generally speaking, they all stem from the same fundamental technique. We're nearly done with this painting now, so the last thing that I usually do is scour the entire painting to make sure that there aren't holes or you know negative space that I want to fill out. So this is what I'm going to do now: is you know wherever I see negative space that I want to fill, I'm just going to go in um, at my discretion and add whatever details, leaves, touches, brush strokes I want um, to fill that in. So that'll vary depending on what yours looks like, and sometimes it's a good idea to just step away from your artwork for just a little bit, take a break. So that way when you come back with a fresh pair of eyes, some of these details will be a lot more obvious to you. I'm gonna add some C-shaped curves to my rose, and this is gonna be echoing or mimicking the type of brush strokes that I did for the larger rose lady. And we're gonna repeat that for all three of these little mini roses. I'm loving how this looks. And then I'm gonna, I just came up with this, add some little headdresses to each of these figures. And I think that's gonna tie it in even more to the florals. So these little dancing ladies have headdresses that are inspired by the petals and the stamens of each of the flowers. And I think that just ties everything in together so beautifully. Let's do this for all the flowers since I think this is such a cute detail and just feels so magical. So let's wrap it up with these last little dots on this tiara and we are done.
I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the like button if you did, and I'll see you next time.